in and I'm using the pressure of this fish attached at this point to hold it. Otherwise, I've got to put my hand down there. So here's what I end up with. This really nice fillet. I might have just a little bit of these rib bones in here. I can kind of feel a couple, which I just talked about. So I'll lay it out, take my knife, follow right along those bones, cut that out. And what I have here is a beautiful boneless fillet. Now I'm going to turn him over, do exactly the same thing on the other side. Now if you don't have a fillet board, that's fine. Not everybody carries a fillet board with them everywhere. You would just do this with your hand. Hold him by the head. Make your first incision right here behind the gill plate. Watch that fin. Till you feel the backbone. Come straight down the backbone with that very sharp point. That's why we carried our knife sharpener with us. So we can keep that point sharp all the time. Lift this fillet up. Follow right along the ribs with that tip. Come into the skin, feel the bones. Every time you do, lift your knife face up just slightly. Come all the way down. We don't want to cut through that. Again, if you do, just take your fingernail, lay it out on a rock or the board that you happen to be using. Just follow right along. Come right along through here like so. And there's our fillets. Ready to go in the hot oil. And that is more than enough shore lunch for a couple of people when you throw in your potatoes and your onions. So these are ready for the seasoned flour. Put them in and see how they come out. So you'll notice our potatoes and our onions are just beautiful. I mean, they're absolutely gorgeous. They're nice and tender. Not stuck to the bottom of our skillet because we had enough oil in there. So to make room for our fish, we'll go ahead and scoop some of these out those on our plate. Now typically I wouldn't have this nice a plate but through the power of television I do. Now to fry this fish I'm going to need a little more oil in my skillet because I want these to fry up good and I want my oil a little bit deeper for that. So I go ahead and set it right here by my fire where it's good and hot. I have my fillets Drop them in, give it a little shake so that that one gets a little coating on it. Go ahead and seal my bag up. Now you'll notice my fire's dying out a little bit here. That's fine. Again, I wanted a small fire. If you're doing this yourself in the field, you can go ahead and put them on a little bit sooner than what I did. So here are my nice breaded fillets. Got those in there. Give them a little of our shake. Check the website if you need that recipe. I'm gonna go ahead and put these on down in the center of my flame. That's really what this glove was good for. Help me get them down into there without that skillet burning me. I know that it's good and hot. You can already see them starting to sizzle. Now these will only take a few minutes. At best, these are probably gonna take three or four minutes. Basically, all I have to do is get these cooked through. They're going to turn opaque, just like all the other fish that we have. Uh, but these fillets are fairly thin. This is an average size fish. I won't say small because I caught it. But these are average size fillets. Um, and they're not going to take very long to cook. So I kind of just babysit it, sit right here by it. I got my potatoes and onions. I could go ahead and start on those, but I want all this to come together at the same time. Hello, and welcome to the Questions for Keaton segment. Clay is going to read off a question here for me that was submitted on our website, keatoninthekitchen.com. If you would like to submit a question, possibly to be read on the air, go to Keaton in the Kitchen, K-E-E-T-O-N-I-N, thekitchen.com, and click on the Ask Sean forum on the right-hand side of the page. What do you have for me today, Clay? This one's from Shelly in Indianapolis, Indiana. Indianapolis, Indiana. I have been to your class on smoking meats, and I would like to purchase a smoker. I think I would use it a lot during the summer. What kind and brand do you recommend? Well, thank you for coming to the class. We actually put on a nice class about smokers and different types and all that here not all that long ago, really. Um, 
and I kind of talked about it a little bit in the class, but I would say, you, I hear a lot, what brand of smoker should I buy? And it's not necessarily the brand of smoker, it's the type of smoker that's gonna be best for you. What, Clay? Question was what kind and what brand. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. The question shouldn't be what kind of smoker. There are a lot of good brands of smokers. You need the type of smoker that's best for you. I would say to you, Shelly, are you gonna smoke a lot? I'm talking two or three times a week. Are you gonna smoke large amounts of meat for your church or for some other community event? Or is this gonna be something that you use once a month during the summer to make a Boston butt or a set of ribs for your family? Those are two totally different types and kinds of smokers. Um, a small electric smoker works great if you're only gonna use it for your family occasionally. Uh, a bigger propane style smoker works great if you serve a larger family or you're gonna smoke a little bit more often. A large charcoal or wood smoker works great if you're going to cater, if you're gonna do large events, if you wanna put 50, 60, 70 kinds of meat, on, or pounds of meat I should say, on there at one time, you'll need a bigger smoker. So look at what you're gonna do with it and then make your decision as to what's best for you. Thank you for the question. So our fillets are good and cooked here on that one side. Well, now if you're wondering if I'm left-handed, the answer to that question is absolutely not. But it just so happens that the grill gloves that you find are right-handed, which makes flipping everything with your left hand become a necessity. So I'm just gonna put those, those are basically finished cooking. Um, they were finished just a second ago when I pulled them out. But I wanna go ahead and just get that other side a little bit brown. Now my fish is ready, so I'll pull this up here. Oh yeah, these are gonna be just fantastic. So with my left-handed prowess, drain those off just slightly. Drain those off, still got a few of my onions that went ahead and browned real good in there. Set my skillet to the side so it can go ahead and be cooling so it can go back in my bag. Get my fork off. Give this whole thing a little shake. So I'm gonna get me a bite of the fish now. Other than being about 6,000 degrees, that is some fine eating. Fresh out of the water, into the skillet on the fire. You get this texture of the potatoes and the onions, kind of soft. Get a little bit of the shake in there, kind of gives it a little bite. Finish with a little of this fish with just that real mild finish as it goes down. You get a little of the seasoned flour in there. This is as good as anything you could have at your house. Much less out here in nature. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us today. Mm, I'm going to have some more of that. That is good. Should have held it up in the breeze a little bit before I took that first bite. There we go, ready to travel. I thought that would record a little better.